quests to look at another couple of um, Palomean poems. So I'm going to look now at the statue of the Virgin at St. at Granard Speaks. And it is, um, I suppose, a tricky enough poem that you can get lost in. It's a long narrative poem um, in which um, the poet takes a very imaginative approach and um, in that sense, the speaker of the poem is this inanimate object, this statue. Um, it's a poem about Catholic Ireland. It fits into Mean's social commentary poems. It's really, really, really important that you remember that your preparation of the poets needs to take into account whether or not, thematically speaking, there are divisions um, or um, demarcations in their work. So with me and you have very deeply personal poems. So you've got the pattern, Cora Ante, um, my father as a vision of St. Francis, um, and Heart Lesson. They're the four, for me, that I look at that are deeply, deeply personal poems. There are others, but they're the four. But then you've also got her social commentary poems. So you've got Death of a Field, which I think is a core poem. Not that there is such a thing, but for me, when I think of me, I think that's an important poem. Um, Prayer for the Children of Longing, uh, which is a really important poem, and this one. Now, there, again, there are others, but this one is, is one that a lot of teachers are teaching, and a lot of students are finding it difficult to kind of drill down into. So look, you're going to you know, talk about her narrative approach, you're going to talk about the imagination of having this statue speaking, and all I'm going to do is indicate to you the parts of the poem that I think are important. But if you want me to sum it up in one sentence, this poem is about the society that Mean inhabited in the 1980s, and it was a society which was hypocritical. That's what this poem is about. It's about hypocrisy in a society. She depicts a world of rural Ireland, Granard, by the way, if you don't know, is in County Longford, and she depicts a world of rural Ireland. She goes to great lengths, two thirds, three quarters of the poem is this meticulous description of this place as viewed by this statue who's being put up there as a symbol of all that is pure and wonderful and beautiful and miraculous in humanity. The fact Catholics believe that a, a, a woman was chosen by God to bear his son. Okay, Mary to Catholics is a symbol of love, sacrifice, forgiveness, decency, all of those things. And that in the 1980s, um, a young girl was found, who she had died near to this grotto, um, giving birth. And she didn't go for medical assistance because in Catholic Ireland that was shameful. I'm going to just show you the lines I think are important in this poem. The ones I've marked in yellow, they're really interesting. The ones I've marked in green are the ones that I would say, if you're going to learn a couple of quotes, they're a priority. Love the, um, the opening. It can be bitter here at times like this. Straight away, it inter introduces the nuanced, subtle, complex style in which me and rights. We have the, the double meaning. Bitter, the weather is bad, it's cold, it's windy. We get that, that's easy. But times like this being bitter, bitter, something that's hard to take, something that's, that's, um, that's difficult, something that causes pain and resentment. Mean is talking about the society in which he lives, which causes the bitterness. The narrator, the virgin, goes on and describes her self stuck up here in this grotto. And then we get some lovely pieces of descriptive writing. The wind, she describes, the howling won't let up. Trees cavort in agony as if they would be free and take off. That's an outstanding example of aesthetic language. You've got the onomatopoeia of howling. You've got the simile, as if they would be free. 
And then you've got that brilliant verb choice, the precision of language, the trees cavort, and not just that, in agony. And it's visual, it's vivid, it's cinematic. You can see it when you read it. So it's this storm imagery that the poet is employing. And in much the way Shakespeare employs storm imagery in Macbeth and in my favourite play, King Lear, the storm is used as a symbol of things gone wrong, as a symbol of disorder, as a symbol of chaos. And this reflects the poet's mood. This is pathetic fallacy being used by the poet to reflect her mood at this point um, when she looks at the society in which she lives. The um, poet's ability to evoke the senses is evident further down when she talks about the virgin, talks about tasting the stagnant water mingled with turf smoke from outlying farms. There's this image of lakes where the lakes are dying. Again, things are, there's something wrong in this society. The fish are drowning. How can fish drown? This, there are these, all of these images of, of ping, things being disjointed, things being out of order, things being unnatural. The water should be fresh, but it's stagnant. And then there's this um, uh, gustatory sense is stimulated with the the stagnant water taste, and then the smell, the olfactory sense of the turf smoke. So if you're just talking about Mean's ability to, her style of writing being evocative, or her narrative approach, or her, you know, her, her, her interesting use of language, all of those quotes that I've just mentioned are, you know, worthy of consideration, okay? There's this description then of the, from the perspective of the, um, statue of what happens every once in a while. People come up and pray in front of the statue. They kneel down uh, in front of the statue and she says they kneel before me and their prayers fly up like sparks from a bonfire that blaze a moment and then wink out. You know, it's, first of all, again, just in terms of imagery, it's a brilliant example of Mean's ability to provoke the senses. It's a visual sense this time. The light and darkness imagery is notable. The simile, like sparks from a bonfire, is vivid. The use of the verb blaze, and then the use of the verb wink, very effective. You get intensity, and then you get extinguished, uh, or the image of, the, of the, the light being extinguished. And there's a sense that the prayers are really of little value it's a critique of Catholic Ireland, of people, you know, in a culture where girls in communion frocks pale rivals to the riot in hedgerows, where people devote their passions to religion. But it's a sense that that, sen that, that devotion is, is um, of little worth or value because the prayers might be blaze, but they wink out, they go nowhere. The money in this poem, the most important part of this poem, and the reason the poem is written, comes in the last section. And in the last section, we get this description of this heartbreaking scene where this young girl dies in the agonies of labor, alone, up on this freezing cold hillside underneath this statue. On a night like this, I remember the child who came with 15 summers to her name. So the word child is used very, very deliberately. She's a 15 year old, she's a child and she's pregnant. And she lay down alone at my feet without doctor or midwife, sorry, without midwife or doctor or friend. And then this lovely tactile image to hold her hand. Now that's an example of means subtle but I was going to say obvious, subtle but powerful social commentary. That's, that, that image there of a child alone and the, 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 the triptych, the, the triad of midwife, doctor, friend 
and then the prefix without, that that child was alone and came to this statue hoping and praying that God would somehow intercede on her behalf. That is me, that's an angry me in who writes that. The tone is not angry because it's the Virgin Mary who speaks. The tone is serene. But me in, in this poem, to me, I'm allowed to have an opinion. To me, she's outraged that this is what our society was like. This child couldn't go to a midwife, couldn't go to a doctor, felt she couldn't talk to any friends because of this terrible stain of being pregnant when she was 15 years old and unmarried. And in this image of she pushed her secret out into the night, far from the town, tucked up in little scandals, and this image of the town being full of, you know, human failure and human intrigue, bargain struck, words spoken, prayers, promises, and then you have this. And this is, this is the most important line in the poem, and it's a critique of the Catholic Church. It's a critique of the society which was dominated by the Catholic Church, though she cried out to me in extremis, the Latin there being very, very, very notable, I did not move. I didn't lift a finger to help her. And that's a moment, I suppose, when, when I was reading the poem, that I realised that the, the Statue of the Virgin, and maybe I should have known this already, you might say, well, do Paul. But the Statue of the Virgin is used as the, in the poem as a symbol of the institution of the Catholic Church, which is static, immobile, and not only is it unwilling to help, but it's incapable of helping the vulnerable. It's, 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 it doesn't move when this child is crying out in extreme agony. It doesn't lift a finger. And this is Meehan's critique of the role of the Catholic Church in Irish society. The girl represents those of us who are vulnerable. The, the church represents hope that there is a God who cares and who cares most about the vulnerable. And Meehan is saying that in this culture in which she lives, that truth is gone. That there is a church which is powerful, which people are devoted to, the symbol of them going up on the hill to pray in front of the statue, but that that church has lost its humanity and doesn't care about the weak and the vulnerable anymore. And if I was learning this poem, and I wanted to just write a paragraph about Meehan's use of, um, or sorry, uh, uh, the fact that she addresses social issues, that's what I would be referring to. That's the line, those three lines I would be learning. The final strict um, um, sequence of the poem, this idea of I didn't intercede with heaven, you know, despite the fact the child was obviously went there to kind of pray for help, nobody helped her, man nor God. Um, we have this really, really interesting uh, conclusion to the poem. On a night like this, I number the days of the solstice and turn back to the light. O sun, centre of our foolish dance, burning heart of stone, molten mother of us all, hear me and have pity. It's a strange ending to the poem. Me and his conjuring up ideas of pre-Christian Ireland, uh, of uh, pagan Ireland, when we used to worship the sun, the sun, the, 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 the light that makes the source of light and heat that makes life possible. She calls life our foolish dance. She, she brings up imagery of the, the, um, the solar system and the planets moving in, its, in their wonderful ballet of um, orbits around the sun. And she, the, the, the virgin, the, you know, the symbol of Catholic belief, prays to the sun almost as if we need to have some sort of change. We need to go back to something that we used to be, that we are not anymore. And there's this fantastic oxymoron that ends the poem, and I don't really understand it, although I, 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 have, it, I have my opinion of what it means. She says this, she creates this image, burning heart of stone. Now, obviously, that's the sun, okay? That's the, you know, the, 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 the the star that is burning. But then, and it's obviously, it's the heart of our system. It's, our system is called the solar system. Without the, the sun, there is no system. But it's more than that, isn't it? 
heart of stone. That's an, that's an image that really, really rings out. You know, is that a critique of the society in which we live? Is that a critique of how we are pitiless or lack charity towards the vulnerable? I think it probably is. Why she says burning heart, I think she's bringing up intensity, but I also think she's bringing up pain. Images of pain and intensity, I wouldn't try to interpret it too um, um, literally, but what I would say is that if you read that, you, you read that poem, um, you're getting an insight into uh, Paula Means' uh, um, sense of or opinions about the, the nature and the failings of the society she's depicting. It is a profoundly religious society where there are uh, vulnerable people who are not cared for and the, powerful, the most powerful institution in the society, the most influential institution in the society, as personified by the speaker, which is the statue of the Virgin at Granard, um, that institution uh, has a heart of stone.